I got a contract with Microsoft on the Xbox team. 2025, what can software engineers do at the moment to stand out in today's market? It's never been easier to become a 10 times engineer. There's not one thing that's going to get you the job. It's a lot of little things that add up. People saying it's impossible to get a job. It's not impossible. That just throws fuel on the fire. What's up? We're here with Will Kensel from Microsoft. Will, how are you doing? Doing well. Thank you for having me, Rari. Tell us a little bit about your journey into tech. I was playing music for about six years when I started Codesmith. From there, after I finished the full-time program, I got a year and a half contract with Microsoft. After that, I did AI at startups. I got my master's in AI. I took the Codesmith AI course, and now I'm back at Xbox. What are you doing with Microsoft? I am on the Xbox team, so right now we're doing a lot of stuff in PC gaming. Previously, I was on the payments team. What made you decide to go from music to tech? My degree was in music and astrophysics, so I always lean heavy on mathematics and it was a way to apply that mathematical skill in the job field. So you see there's quite a lot of transferable skills between tech and music then? Yeah, but some aren't transferable and I feel like Codesmith taught me a lot of the corporate how to act in that setting that I really needed and wouldn't have gotten had I just tried to go music, learn code, then go to the industry. What salary were you looking at when you're in music compared to now that you're in tech? I won't give you numbers, but I will say the salary has doubled. I know other cohort mates either got more or less, but I feel like I got the general. But still much better than music. Quality of life and work-life balance, how do they compare tech and music? Tech brought me to the West Coast, which really improves the uh, work-life balance, as you can see on this lovely day behind us. I'm not getting home at 2 a.m. or on a tour where I'm sleeping on the bus anymore. Why did you choose Codesmith? There were several coding boot camps I could have chose, and I linked to Codesmith because of the results they got. But the first two times I applied, I got rejected from Codesmith. So I feel like you get people who really want to go there, who are really motivated to put the time and effort in. Codesmith has one of the strongest hiring programs I've seen from Eric Kirsten to the whole team there, which I haven't seen at any educational organization I've been to. When you finished Codesmith, was it your intention to go for a fang level job or were you looking at all kinds of different areas of tech? No, my goal was to get a job, just like everybody. Like it's, it was easier back then, it's harder now, but it's similar tools and determination. Then you also did a master's in AI. Yeah, University of San Diego. I love that master's course. A lot of great engineers there from companies like Google, Lockheed Martin. So why then did you, you went from an AI master's there to doing the AI machine learning program at Codesmith? Because I believe Codesmith is the best coding program out there for a broad understanding of the field. It helped me get my first role. It's done a lot for countless other individuals and help to change the course of their career and lives. I owe a lot to them and I think their programs they offer are some of the best we have in the country. What advice can you give to people who have the aspiration of working for a fine company? I would say remain optimistic because if you're optimistic about an outcome, it's far more likely that the outcome will actually happen than if you offer like a pessimistic attitude. I can't do it. These interviews are too hard. Every time I fail, I didn't even see it like that. This thing didn't work. You retool. Like Tom Brady, one of the greatest athletes of our generation. He won, what, five Super Bowls, but he also lost three Super Bowls. He didn't let that get him down. So not focusing on the failures and just remaining optimistic. What is the biggest setback you've ever had in your career? Being unemployed is hard on the brain. You'll think that you don't have value and then you'll get a role that gives you value and you'll realize your self-worth. I switched to go to AI startups and that hurt a little bit of my self-worth too, but I was still the same person. Don't let where you're at determine your self-worth as a software engineer and don't let it get you down. There's four great pieces of advice my dad gave me. Optimism, not accepting failure, not giving up, surrounding myself with people who wanted me to succeed, which was the Codesmith community. And also when I'm dealing with others, I also realize what success means to them and what it means for them to succeed. That sort of two-way street. You were at Microsoft for a while, then you started working at AI startups. Yeah, it was like mostly CNN's image classifying. One company I worked at was a physical rehabilitation company that would use imaging to get the angles you would use your muscles and help speed up patient recovery. What is one thing that you would wish that non-technical people today understood about AI and machine learning? I wish people just educate themselves more on it so there's less of a gap of knowledge and more transparency between how these systems work and how people understand these systems. It can't do everything. It's very reliant on data and what data you have and how you actually get information from that data. And I wish there was more common knowledge about AI. So there's a lot of layoffs in tech and have been for a few years. Do you think that those layoffs are happening because of external forces? And if so, what are they? Or because of internal AI replacing engineers? I think there's some wishful thinking that AI will solve a lot of problems. It's never been an easier time to become a 10 times engineer because of the resources you have. But the layoffs, I feel, can sometimes be a cycle between like hiring and needing a workforce, just like last year and the year before. What would you say to people who are concerned that they don't have what it takes to get into tech? Yeah, I thought that. We all think that sometimes. Does it make you a coder or not? We all have those thoughts. I had that thought today and then everything worked and came together and I'm like, oh, I actually can do that. That feeling doesn't go away. It's just 
just something you deal with and you manage, you keep going. Biggest mistake you've ever made on the job? No one's trusted me with their cloud services that far in production, which they shouldn't. Biggest mistake on the job? Getting blockers. Having a no blocker mindset. Even when you don't know whether you need to go left or right, you feel like you've tried all paths. Setting up a solution that might take you like two or three hours to just see, not even if it solves your bug, but just gives you more evidence on what the problem is. So not accepting blockers and figuring out ways to get around them. What is your proudest moment in tech? Every time I solve a bug, it's like a gambling rush almost. When you solve a bug and it finally works, you're like, yes. <laughs> Sweet. Let's post it to Teams, show people that the feature is working. Yeah, I actually get a pretty big rush when solving a bug, as most people do when they've been working eight hours on the same thing. What is your worst coding habit or shortcut? I take breaks during build processes. I'll have a build that'll run 20 minutes, and I'll take a break that's 30 minutes, and I'll lose 10 minutes, like 50% of that time, when I could have not lost 50% of the time to run the build. What is the most overhyped thing in tech right now? The most overhyped trend is replacing engineers with AI. You can try to get AI to do your code but it's probably gonna do bad paradigms. If you're using AI to do your code, it's not trained on all the best code. It's trained on all the code. Sometimes people will lean hard on the AI to do the code and you'll see it in like the AI comments and you'll be like, this code works, but it's not maintainable. It's not reusable. A lot of things are hard coded. Replacing engineers with AI is overhyped. You can replace some things with it, but not everything. This is just predictions. This might make people upset. I think bartenders will all get replaced with AI. There's a lot of places coming out now where you can just leave your credit card, pour your own drinks. So like a brewery. I think that's something that's going to become more widespread. We're not going to need toll booths as much. Toll booth attendance is becoming the thing of the past. I do think it's going to open up a lot of new jobs where we're using more brain power, where we need people to maintain these systems, have eyes on the site, things like that. So we're going to have more jobs where people will need to use more of their cognitive abilities. So you think AI could actually lead to more jobs for engineers, people who understand that tool? I think that jobs that are more menial and require a lower cognitive ability to do will get replaced pretty soon simply and jobs where you actually need more cognitive ability to maintain system and things like that will grow. Top tips for negotiating a better salary. Talk to Eric Kirsten. I have a script that I got from him and it has served me well every time. Codesmith did a great job with that. It's nerve wracking to negotiate your salary and sometimes they might not budge, but it's always worth trying to rehearse something to say back so that you'll be able to push your salary a little bit. And I recommend doing that in front of your mirror with a script or something to gain confidence. Early career engineers or aspiring engineers looking to get into tech in 2025, what advice or top tips would you have for them? Don't give up because it's hard and it can be discouraging at times. But if you experience some sort of failure, just rework your strategy. Don't fail at the same things twice. If you fail at the same thing three times and you've prepared three times for it, it's probably something you need to look at differently. As I said, Coatsmith, I failed maybe even three times trying to get in and I didn't stop me. That just throws fuel on the fire. Tell us one thing that early career engineers always get wrong. Coding too fast rather than like really using your notebook and writing out the problem. I I found it to be a lot more helpful when I started actually writing out what I was doing before running a couple commands and saying, that didn't work, let me try something else. Actually documenting what processes you did to get past errors or bugs or feature development so that when you've been working like eight hours, you know you've already done something, you can check it off the list. What is the biggest lie the tech industry is telling people these days? When people are saying it's impossible to get a job, it's not impossible. You can do different avenues for how you can get to your career. I just posted to some friends who are in the job search that there's an AI conference it's free next week. So if you're doing something other than going to that and you're on the job search, there's so many different avenues that you can take. So don't get discouraged. There's not like one thing that's going to get you the job necessarily. It's going to be a lot of little things that add up. It's not going to be like a great project you made or you have a great website for yourself or one connection you made that you're putting all your eggs in that basket. It's a lot of those little things. So don't get discouraged off of one failure. Just continue the build. If you keep building, then it'll always be better. What can software engineers do at the moment to really stand out in today's market? Go to events, meet people not online, actually meet people in the cities you're in. I know people talk a lot about remote work and tech. I actually wasn't looking for a remote job, but I think there's a big move for people who were remote to start going into office. Obviously you've seen, so now there's a bit of a shuffling where someone in Seattle who was working remote in LA and someone working remote in LA and the companies in Seattle, they do a kind of like shuffling around. So I feel like going to actual in-person events and lining up roles like that in your pipeline yeah. is important, especially like remote gets so many applicants. In your city, you can really stand out more to people actually there. As good a program Codesmith is, it's still on you to get the job. We can offer all the resources that will help you and you will get there. But if you just expect to go to a program and then get a job, that's like going to college, getting a degree and then blaming the college for not getting the role. So don't accept failure, keep going, rely on systems that you have, believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, who's gonna believe in you? Thank you so much. Thank you.